one of my profs actually worked at OpenAI. This was the best class of my entire degree. And we were allowed to use ChatGPT for all of the assignments. Hi everyone, I'm Selena and I'm a fourth year computer science student at UBC. In this video, I'm gonna talk about the upper year comp sci electives that I took and whether or not I think you should take them too. Of course, everything is subjective and courses change every semester. So be sure to keep that in mind because my experience might not actually be reflective of what the course is currently like. I'll include the semester I took the course in in this corner right up here. I also won't get into any of the core required classes since those are mandatory, but I hope that this video helps you in choosing your upper year comp sci electives. And without further ado, let's get started. So starting off the 300 level courses, we have CompSci 304, Introduction to Relational Databases. CompSci 304 is all about relational database systems. Starting from basics like ER diagrams and logical database designs, to complex topics like SQL and data normalization. You'll also get hands-on experience with relational query languages and explore the realm of data warehouses. In this course, you're also going to do a full stack project, including the use of a database in the back end, which you can put onto your resume. When I took this course, we were allowed to use any stack, so there was a lot of flexibility there. Along with the project, there is one midterm and one final exam. 304 will give you a solid foundation in SQL, which is the standard language in relational databases. SQL is not just a tool for database administrators. It's also widely used in OAs and technical interviews. I've had SQL come up in numerous OAs and everything you learn in this class will help you ace those questions. This course is also not as demanding as some of the others, so you can take it along with other comp sci classes. When I took this course, I was doing 310 and 313 at the same time, and I didn't find the contents of this class to be really stressful or really hard. All in all, I think it's a really useful course and I would rate it a nine out of 10. Next up, we have CompSci 317, Introduction to Computer Networking. 317 is all about how data moves from one point to another in the world of computing. You'll go layer by layer to understand the complex architecture of network systems from the physical infrastructure that carries data to the application protocols that define the exchange of information between endpoints. This course also touches on developing distributed systems, and this is a really relevant topic as more and more companies are moving to distributed systems in order to scale their operations. Understanding the underlying network principles to support these operations will help make you a standout candidate in your job applications. When I took this course, we had five programming assignments, some done in C and some done in Java, and these included implementing things like SMTP or POP3, both of which you'll learn about in this class. Along with the programming assignments, we also had quizzes around every two weeks and a final exam at the end. Overall, I would give this course a 7.5 out of 10. I think the info is really relevant, especially if you want to go into more courses talking about distributed systems, such as 416. Next up, we have CompSci 340, Machine Learning and Data Mining. This was the best class of my entire degree. Machine learning and data mining are at the forefront of technology, influencing everything from e-commerce to computer graphics. 340 will introduce you to models and algorithms that are essential to ML, including things such as clustering, classification, and regression. On top of learning some of the most important and exciting information, I also had two of the best profs, Andreas Leierman and Jeff Klum. Both of these profs have worked in the industry and one of them actually worked at OpenAI. Anytime someone asks me what is the one course I would recommend, it would be this one. I highly recommend 340 to every single comp sci student, especially if you're strong in linear algebra and calc. The skills that you'll learn in this class are crucial if you want to do more ML in the future. The content is genuinely interesting and I was excited to go to every single class. This class is also insanely organized, so the slides had all the information you need in order to succeed and everything you learn in class and in tutorial is directly related to your assignments. Speaking of assignments, 
When I took this course, there were six assignments total, and each assignment consisted of coding, math, like MAP or MLE, and short answer questions. We also had a midterm and a final exam, both of which we were allowed to bring in one cheat sheet. I can't say enough positive things about this class. I highly, highly recommend this course for everyone, so overall, I would give it a 10 out of 10. Finishing off our 300 level courses is CompSci 344, Introduction to Human-Computer Interaction Methods. In this course, you'll learn basic tools and techniques with a systemic approach to interface design, task analysis, and various evaluation methods. Understanding human-computer interaction is essential for enhancing user experience. This course gives you skills to both critique and design interfaces so that you can develop one that is intuitive and engaging for the user. The contents of this course are not very hard to understand because everything is so intuitive, it's almost like common sense. For example, if you see a knob, then you turn it, but if you see a button, then you're likely to push it. There is a mini project where you will critique an interface and this is done in pairs and a bigger project done in groups of around four to six people where you will critique and then design an interface. The group project will also focus on coming up with a human need and then developing an interface which addresses that human need. This course didn't take up as much time as some of the other courses, such as 317 or 340, so you can take this while you're taking some other more demanding courses. There's also one midterm and one final, and we were allowed to bring in a cheat sheet into both of these exams. Overall, I would give this course a 7.5 out of 10. So now that we've covered the 300 level courses, let's get into the 400. Starting off our 400 level courses, we have CompSci 430, Computers and Society, which talks about computers and society. In this course, you'll learn different workable ethical theories and then use these theories to argue for the different topics that come up each week, some of which include AI, privacy, and intellectual property. Each week, you'll also be assigned some reading to do from the textbook, and then you're going to be asked to write an essay that relates to some of the things talked about in the reading. But don't worry, the essay is not very long. When I took this course, we had a 2,500 character limit. So this course almost feels like a high school English class, except you'll be using the ethical theories talked about in class to respond to some argument. We also had to do weekly peer reviews of other students' essays, so that counts for a portion of your grade as well. Another thing I want to mention is this class focuses heavily on in-class participation because a lot of the time is spent on in-class discussions. I would say we spend anywhere from 30 to 80% of the class doing in-class participation and in-class discussions, so attendance is very important. There are also two midterms and one final in this course. In the two midterms, there are six short answer questions and one essay. The short answer questions will be taken directly from a question bank, which will be released to you ahead of time by the prof. So if you study the list of questions that you're given, you're sure to do really well. Overall, I would rate 430 an 8 out of 10. Next up, we have CompSci 436N NLP. NLP lies at the intersection of computer science, linguistics, and artificial intelligence. NLP involves teaching machines to understand, interpret, and respond to human language in a way that is both meaningful and useful. So why study NLP? Well, in every area of tech, we're seeing the impact of enhanced language understanding. From chatbots and virtual assistants to content recommendation systems and sentiment analysis, NLP Technologies is improving how businesses operate and how users interact with their devices. In this course, you'll touch on a range of topics, from semantics and syntax to machine learning techniques applied to language data. You'll learn about tokenization, part of speech tagging, transformers, and more. All of these are essential tools that help machines process and understand language. When I took this course, we had three programming assignments and we were allowed to use ChatGPT for all of the assignments. We also had Canvas quizzes, but they were unlimited attempts, so you're sure to get 100%. There was also one midterm and one final, and we were allowed to bring in one cheat sheet. Overall, I would rate this class an 8 out of 10. Last but not least, 
we have CompSci 440, which is the subsequent course to 340. CompSci 440 dives into advanced machine learning topics with a strong emphasis on probabilistic models and Bayesian inference. It's designed for students who have taken 340 or an equivalent course, so it is expected that you're aware of certain algorithms that are out there and techniques used. However, 440 is a lot more math focused than 340 is. Throughout the course, you'll engage in a range of topics, some of which include Monte Carlo, probabilistic and generative models, as well as exponential families. These are all crucial for tasks involving making predictions from uncertain data, a common challenge in advanced AI projects. There is a little bit of overlap between this course and 436N. For example, both classes will talk about Markov chains and transformers, but 440 will talk more about the probabilistic models behind these. Because the content is a little more technical than 340's content is, I would say unfortunately it is a little dry. And in terms of organization, when I took this course, it was only the prof's second time teaching it, so it was disorganized, but I'm sure that improvements will be made. Throughout the semester, we had six quizzes and three assignments, and there is one final exam. I would say if you want to do more school after undergrad with an emphasis on ML, then this class would be perfect for you to take. Considering the fact that it is such a senior level course and it is so important and teaches so many important things, I don't think it should have been as disorganized as it was, but that might just be a one-time thing. So because of the disorganization as a whole, as well as inconsistencies we experienced in the slides and assignments throughout the term, I will have to give this course a 7.5 out of 10. However, if improvements are made, then I think based on the content, it would be at least an 8 or an 8.5. So those were the upper year CompSci electives I took and my thoughts on them. I hope this video helps you when you're choosing your upper year CompSci electives. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!